so it's extra good. And then the scallion cream cheese, and you can really taste. <laughs> Of this, so this is just making me smile right now looking at it. Season one, seriously. Mm, definitely. I've got a lot to go. He does, he does. Hot and pity. Look, and there's a marble pound. Ah, oh, yes, can you show us that? I've never seen anything like that before. smelling something. There we oh. go. There we go. <laughs> hey guys, today we have a special episode. We're collaborating with Here V Bar. We'll put the link in the uh, description, but this is the second time we've collaborated with him. It was really hot the first day. Now it's the opposite, really yeah. cold. We're in the Lower East Side and we're going to do a special Jewish food tour because Here V Bar has Jewish heritage. And we're going to teach him a couple of things about the Lower East Side that maybe he didn't know. And our first stop is Moishe's Kosher, Kosher Jewish Bakery. And it's actually the oldest kosher Jewish bakery left in the Lower East Side. And there used to be so many, but this is the last one remaining. I am just uh, really excited and I appreciate you guys taking the time to show me around. And I want to learn more about my Jewish culture. Let's do this. All right, awesome. And we're gonna get we're gonna get some goodies along the way too. Awesome. Extra Can't wait. good. Can't wait. Wow, they even have the coronavirus mask in Hebrew. There's no Jews here. It used to be Jewish. It used to be Jewish. <laughs> now it's uh, now it's uh, Spanish, Arabic, Chinese, uh, I, everything. So I want to show you uh, here, Vibar, the not only all the amazing homemade items they make, but look at the prices because it is amazing. A loaf of rye bread. Four dollars. How can you go wrong for fresh rye bread? And they even sell it by the slice. Where are they? Where are you? Moishe's is known for is their homemade challah bread, Five, six. homemade rye bread, many many varieties of cookies, delicious cakes, pastries, including they're black and white cookies. Pound cake. Look, and there's a marble pound. For the record, I love black and white cookies. All oh, right. One of my favorites in New York. In well, you'll have you'll have to bring one back home for Adriana because it's all might, wrapped yeah. in plastic, so that's a good traveling item. And this is their their they have amazing arugula and I mean look at this. It's even like a little roll. You can see all the chocolate rolled up in there and the cream. It's just really, really, really amazing. Oh, here's arugula right here. And, and, and uh, I'm going to get two raspberries. How much? Correctly, this is their mandel bread. 
Okay. Which is another. Oh right? Isn't this the mandel bread? What do you say? This is the mandel bread, right? Yes, yes. And what, what goes into the mandel bread? Do you know? Say again. What what what's the, what is the, the mandel bread? It's mandel a sweet. bread is really a big cookie. A big cookie. It is a big cookie. Yeah. <laughs> Extra big. What, what? Uh, big, big. This is with nuts and fruit. And this is marble, plain. This is simple. Yeah. How how long has this bakery been open? What year? You and you and me together are not as old. <laughs> <laughs> And how long have you been working with Mrs. Perlmutter? Oh, five years. How many? Fifty? Fifty years. Wow. Amazing, amazing. I stopped when I was a little girl. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's... Now I got old here. You shouldn't work here. You get old. <laughs> That's why I got off. Yes, so I definitely want a loaf of rye bread. Yeah. Yes, and I'd love to have it sliced using your ancient slicer. Yes, yeah, sliced? N uh, sliced and on the unseated, please. Yeah, I don't give seed. Seed it, you have to ask for seed. Otherwise, you won't get it. And do you see even there the dispenser for the the paper to wrap everything in? How old it is? Here because I love I love your uh, rye bread and I miss it because I used to get it from uh, Mrs. Pearl you know, son. He, got, he was 50 years there and he got tired. You know this is a job if you own it and he baked 24 hours. They don't let you live and it, so he got tired of it. Getting the rye bread is oh, watching yeah. that being cut, the noise that it makes. I mean, they don't make machines like that yeah, anymore. Anything else? A apricot commentation as well. I'll do one of those too. And one of the black and white cookies. You want the black and white cookies? Yeah, and can we get another apricot please of the hamantashen? No, they wrap it in plastic now because of coronavirus. I'm really, I'm really excited to try this. By the way, this is humongous. Yeah, I'm used to eating mini hamantaschen, not this big normally. Yeah, that's my wife. You're gonna have dog. some rye bread. Okay, pour. Oh sure. You ready? Catch. All right. He eats me. He eats the end of the rye. Give him one more. We'll give him one more. Oh, wait up. I think he wants to go inside. Oh, <laughs> one more slice. I'm going to break this one in two. Okay. You can see how airy and delicious it is. Okay, one more. That's it for the road. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. All right, let me 
Lower this. Big reveal, the hamantaschen. Okay, hold on. Now, they usually, like I said, I'm gonna get the, my mask off so we can taste it. They usually don't have them wrapped, but because of coronavirus, Moishas, which has been here since like forever, has adapted, and now they're wrapping up their individual little pastries and cookies, which is nice, you know, extra, extra COVID friendly. I just have to say, this hamantaschen looks incredible. Growing up, I was used to eating a much smaller version of this, so this is just making me smile right now looking at it. I also got a black and white cookie in here for Audrey. Adriana oh, you to gotta go later. Show it. Oh, I gotta show it, of course. Let me. We won't eat it now because Adriana would be very mad at us if we ate her black and white cookie. This is a really good New York City cookie here, for the record. And in fact, it said that the black and white cookie was invented here in the Lower East Side. I don't know if that's the truth of it, but it sounds good. So let's let's go with that. Do it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. So we're gonna just bite in at the same let's do time. It. Oh, yours is yours is perfect because you've got the apricot right in the first bite. I'll have to take like two bites to get to the apricot. I'm, I'm going right in for the apricot. But I'll do my best. <laughs> All right, ready? All right, One, let's go for it. Two, three. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I just bit right into the apricot. First bite, heaven. Mm. Mine is still cookie. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't get to the apricot yet, but even the cookie is so fresh, so delicious. You can see that they're made with love. I mean, you can see that they're hand done. These are all pinch by hand. There's no machine making these. This is definitely, definitely done by hand. Completely. All right. Everything there fresh. And I don't think I've ever been here before, actually, which is a shame. All right, I gotta get some apricot. Let's see if I'm gonna get a big enough bite. You've got to get in the apricot, yep. Super sweet. Mm. This is for the holiday of Purim. It was named after Haman, who is the villain in the Torah in the Purim story. Oh. Remember well, that in Hebrew school. I'm saying this cookie is villainous. <laughs> in an extra, extra good way. So delicious, so fresh. I mean, it feels like you can really have it at any time of day. Like this is kind of like a nice breakfast treat too, because it's pretty yeah. early in the morning. I don't mind having this for breakfast. This with coffee? Yeah. Oh, very well. I like that idea. <laughs> was this? Okay. <laughs> I can tell you that the giant, giant loaf of rye bread that I got was $4. So altogether it was $11. So if we do the math, I think this probably was Two fifty, yeah. if I remember. Good deal. And then the black and white cookie. You know what? I'll double check. I'll go inside and double check. But I mean, come on, a bargain. Look at this giant cookie. I mean, you can pay for like a little tiny cookie, almost two dollars. It's like three cookies in one. Seriously. Mm, definitely. I've got a lot to go. Mm. Yes, I better save them. Look at all the crumbs are getting in my stomach. I know. I know. That's so silly. All right, I'm gonna Hudson, definitely Hudson save waiting. room. Does Hudson eat cookies? I'm curious. Would you feed him that or no? Yes. I'm if it doesn't gonna... have chocolate, it's safe for Hudson. He is looking like he yeah, really wants some Yeah, and we had to Hudson, cookies. we had to put him over here because we didn't want him to get too jealous of our cookies. But I'll, I'll give him a little piece. Okay, wait, I'll break off a corner. All right, you ready, Hudson? You're being so good. You want to catch? Catch. Oh. All right. He's very good on camera. <laughs> He's ready. He's camera ready. So I just want to show you guys. Hudson had the end of the rye already, but this is the rye bread. And it was freshly baked this morning. $4 for this whole entire loaf. And no preservatives, no additives. It's just super fresh, super delicious. And then the hamantaschen, which we already had a little bit of. So you, let me get it out of the bag again. So you can see, it's missing a couple of corners of its tricolor hat. Uh, this was only $2.50. Again, fresh, delicious, extra, extra good. And the black and white cookie that Here Be Bar got, $2. That's it. So all 
all this stuff that we got, $11. I mean. Good deals, Manhattan. Exactly. Uh, that should be on our Jewish food cheap eat store. We'll have to do another yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, get it, get four. Sit. Okay, get four. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Kosher certified. It's kosher, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so nice to anyone that needs it. Yeah. Oh, that's really wonderful. How are you? Oh, This is uh, we, we are making we are yeah. making it oh. together, yeah. Oh, oh, what is your name? My name is Bibi. Bibi, Bibi. nice Bibi. to meet you. And we give it out. We give it out 500 contests every day. Oh my God! Yeah. Ever since the pandemic started yes, in March. Yes, yes. We give it out, yeah. and and it's kosher food, so it's the best quality we give it out. Are you right. recording? Yeah. And even even non-kosher people, they are getting the kosher one. They are getting higher quality. Yes. And we're yes. very happy for that. Oh wow! Yeah. And he's the chef. He's doing the, the good job. Yeah. And do you change it like every day? It's every day. Different? Every day. It's different. different food, all fresh, being packed like you know, in early morning. We walk so what's today's the... special? So today we have a uh, Moroccan couscous chicken. with root vegetables and uh, uh, and uh, uh, chicken. Uh, so then they can just heat it up and they're good, right? Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. That's a really nice thing you're doing. Thank you. Oh, hi, Lenny. Yes, we met last time that I was here. Bialy. And 
and they're really, really different because they actually have different ingredients. In a Bialy, there's no sugar and there's no malt. So that's the major difference between like the ingredients of a bagel versus Bialy. And also, Bialy's have to be cooked in very large batches and they're very temperamental because it's also basically only a couple of ingredients in a Bialy. It's only water, yeast, salt, and flour. That's it. Very, very, very simple. And of course, onions. Of course, onions are usually added in as well in the center. And it's basically like a circle with a depressed center full of the um, onions. And we're definitely going to go in. We'll get a Bialy. We'll show you the difference between a Bialy and a bagel. And yeah, these are extra, extra good. This place, Kosar's, is the only Bialy Bakery in the whole United States. Extra good. So let's go in and check it out. So these photos are like, this is how the Lower East Side looked back when, you know, as I was describing it, when it was basically full of old tenement buildings and the home to one and a half million Look how crowded it was.
bag? Yeah, and if, actually you can hold the bagel, yeah. Okay. Ready? That bagel barely has a hole in it. <laughs> That's not a normal bagel. No, this Where's is... Where's the hole? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's a, like a, you know... Yali bagel hybrid. It's a bagel times two. It's a big Yali. <laughs> I'm it's, good. Jimmy, you should do the same thing with the bagel. Actually, I want to show, and, and I like both too. Alright guys, we have got both the Bialy and the bagel in front of us. This bagel, by the way, is absolutely one of the largest bagels I've ever seen. It barely has a hole in the middle, but we're still going to call it a bagel. Carla, can you talk more about the differences outside of the obvious in the middle? Right, besides their obvious appearance, because this Bialy has that depressed center full of the onions, because we got the onion Bialy. Um, the basic big difference be is the ingredients. Like I said, Bialy must much, much simpler. Just flour, water, yeast, and salt. That's it. Very simple. And then because you're adding the onions in the center, it's onions as well. But I mean, you can forego yeah. the onions and just do garlic or something like that. But the bagel has malt and sugar. So like when you taste it, you can taste like the sweetness even in a plain bagel, but not the Bialy. The Bialy to me, I would say like the dough itself is like the consistency and the taste of like pizza dough okay. if you didn't put sauce or cheese on it. If you just ate the pizza dough, you know, crust or something like that. So yeah, I mean, I, I guess we got to go for let's it go now. Let's go for the Bialy's. Yeah, let's, let's try it. Let's go for the Bialy. Here All we right. go. I haven't had this in a long time. Going in. Much thicker than a bagel. Completely tastes like pizza dough. I see that. You can feel it, right? And then mm -hmm. it's airy, but not like the big airiness that's in a in that's yeah. in a bagel. And you know, it's not it's not as high, obviously. It's, I mean, de it's denser. Right, it is denser. De definitely, definitely. You know, the yeast is making it rise, but it doesn't have that extra added sugar, which I think makes the bagel rise exactly higher as well. So because there's no sugar, definitely in this one. I gotta get to the onion part. That's what that's what I've been eyeing. Yes, yes, I I do too. But I'm gonna have to go for a bigger bite than mm -hmm. this. Mm. Mm. Oh, you got to the onion. I ripped right to it. Look at this thing, guys. Um, I would say the onion's a nice surprise in the middle. I'm a fan of onions. If you like onions, you may like Bialy's more mm. than bagels. But I will say that I grew up eating bagels all the time in New Jersey, and I'll still take a bagel over a Bialy. But if you're visiting New York and you want something very unique, an old school Bialy place like this, you are telling me is extremely hard to find. Yes, I mean, there's places that sell Bialy's, but I mean, I've, I've tried them. And the I know for a fact that they're using the same dough used to make a bagel, but then they'll just form them to look like a Bialy. Because Bialy's have to be cooked in very large batches, otherwise it just doesn't work. So very few places will actually take the time to make both a Bialy and both a bagel. But they definitely do because, like I said, they started making only Bialy's. And that's what they're really, really known for. I know what's really great about this, the more I eat it, there's like little pieces of onion left all around and I'm getting that onion flavor. Yeah, like flecks of it in yeah, there, right? Yeah. Because it's so cold out today, I have a great story about Kosars that we found out from the second owner, which was Deborah Engelmeyer, who took over from Morris Kosar. What she told us is when Kosars was originally founded, that they not only did they only sell Bialy's, but the family kept warm by sleeping over the oven. Like they actually would just like set up like little pillows and slept on top of the oven because they didn't have any heat, you know, back in the 1930s and the oven provided their heat. So we thought that was like an extra, extra good story. And on a cold day like today, I can see getting nice and warm over that Bialy oven.
but we're here at the corner of Essex and Grand Street at the Pickle Guys. And the Pickle Guys are known for their kosher pickles. And it was founded by Alan Kaufman in, in 2003. But he has roots going back to making pickles here on the Lower East Side since the 1980s. Because back in the day, there were many, many pickle spots here on the Lower East Side because the pickle is like a staple of the Eastern European Jewish diet. In fact, like back when, um, you know, they were just like suffering back in Eastern Europe, the mainstay of their diet was like bread, water, and pickles. And they carried over when the Eastern European Jews came here to the Lower East Side, they kept up the tradition of curing cucumbers. And here at the Pickle Guys, everything is kosher and there's many different like levels of curing. So go inside, we're gonna check it out. The nice thing about the Pickle Guys is if you're not sure of what to get, you they give you free samples. So oh, definitely that. partake in that. that. And not only do they have pickles, they have other vegetables that are pickled. And they even have some like pickled fruits, so extra good. Let's check it out. Right? Yeah, you can definitely smell the pickles. If you don't smell the pickles here, then there's something wrong with your nose. <laughs> okay, so this is Alan Kaufman. He's the owner, founder of the Pickle Guys. And yeah, so tell us a little bit about your pickle store, uh, you know, how you got started in the business, and the history of the pickle here in the Lower East Side. Okay, pickles have been here since 1910. It started during, uh, I guess, World War I when Jews were leaving uh, Russia and Poland because of persecution. So they came to America. They came here through Ellis Island and you ended up in the closest area from Ellis Island which would be the Lower East Side. At one time, this was a real Jewish neighborhood. Uh, so the people brought over what they knew how to do. They knew how to make pickles. It was an inexpensive item. And uh, it felt like home cooking, a home food snack. At that time, it was a nickel for a pickle. And that was a meal. You know, oh, I, I like that, that a nickel for a pickle. That's what it was. When I first started, there were only seven barrels here of pickles, peppers, tomatoes, and sauerkraut. Those are the original recipes that we use today from 1910. All the other stuff here are new items, and it's probably about 45 different new items here. Despite what people think, business stinks. Uh, COVID viruses, you know, definitely put a damper on all the businesses. I'm sure there's very few businesses that says they're doing great. So, of course, we're not doing that great either. And still today, what is your most popular seller? Most popular item here are sour pickles, full sour pickles. We sell more sour pickles than anything else here. Wow. Uh, and we could buy just still one pickle today, right? That's right. One pickle for one dollar, as opposed to a nickel a pickle. <laughs> and uh, when you get a quart for eight dollars, you get about 10 to 12 pickles in there. Because this takes three months to make. Wow. Wow, for the full sour pickle. The full too. sour pickle takes three months to make. Wow. And we ship anywhere in the United States. You have to ship right to your house. Uh, New pickle. See how green it is? Uh, right, so that's kind of like the like closest it can be to a cucumber. Yes, it's only been pickled for one to ten days. Wow. After two weeks. It turns to a half sour pickle. You see how the color changes? It goes sort of yellow. Right. And then the other pickle we saw, the sour pickles, those are three months old. And those are the most garlicky and the most dill flavored. I know during Passover, as you ramp up production of your homemade horseradish, and, your, and we've gotten pictures of you like right there in the front with your gas mask on, you know, doing the, you know, with the fresh root. During, during Passover, we make fresh ground horseradish. We grind it right sidewalk for you. Uh, it's pretty much the best you can get. I'll knock your socks off. <laughs> Super hot. And we peel it, we wash it, peel it, grind it, put it in a jar, and you're off you go. Exactly. Thank you. We're just going to do uh, two, two sour pickles. 
Sure, no problem. Okay. What are you looking for now? The best ones? Okay, you ever do puzzles? Yes. I can't put all big pickles in there, so I'm looking for the, the way oh, to make the best pickles. Oh, figure pickle. it out. Yeah. Yep. Just like a puzzle. Or else you're only going to get one pickle in there. <laughs> right. This is Mother Nature right here. God <laughs> makes it, we pickle it. <laughs> Okay, I'll make a little thing there for you, okay? Oh, oh, perfect. Oh, thank you. No. Thank you. And so we're going with the classic. We've been doing classics all day. Sour, pickle, super sour, right? Full sour, this is. Okay, let's, let's do it. So much pickle juice, I would say, in it. Definitely so sour. So juicy, so sour. And you, you like, you heard that snap too when I bit into it, right? It's super crisp, like extra fresh, good. Really crunchy. Oh yeah. Yes. I think the owner is a character. Definitely stop by this place. Yeah, like you said, it was five cents a pickle. Hey, hey, no, no, Hudson loves pickles too, and now a dollar a pickle, so it's still a very affordable food. So you said a pickle for a nickel. A pickle for a nickel, that's it. We got a pickle piece for Hudson because he loves pickles. Ready, catch. All right. Hudson not too, deserves his own channel. Not too sour, Hudson, what do you think? Hudson, what do you think? Stamp of approval? Yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> there you go. Extra good. Oh, yes, he has a Carhartt jacket also. Oh. <laughs> What's his name? Slate. Oh, that's a beautiful name. Hi, Slate. Hi. Do you like pickles, too? Yeah, I don't think he's pickles. had pickles before. <laughs> <laughs> spot in Lower East Side if you're a fan of bagels with locks. <laughs> yeah, we're in front of Russ and Daughters Appetizers on East Houston Street near Allen, and it's been in business since 1914, and it's actually the oldest appetizing store in the Lower East Side. There used to be like, well, you know, dozens and dozens of appetizing stores, and this is the last one left. And it's a family owned business. It's now owned by the fourth generation owner Joshua Russ Tupper and Nikki Russ Fetterman, who's a descendant of the Ann Daughters, because as you see on the sign, Russ and Daughters, it's the first store believed to be in the whole United States to have Ann Daughters in its name. Because back in the early 1900s, you know, stores were passed down from like father to son, father to son, never to the daughters. But the interesting story is Joel Russ, who founded Russ and Daughters, he had three beautiful daughters who worked in the store as teenagers. And he quickly realized that his store became the most popular appetizing store in the early 1900s because people would come in to flirt with his daughters. Like the, you know, little magic making going on or whatever it <laughs> yeah. was and he's like oh my daughters are actually big assets to my business 
let me put them on the sign because before then it was called Joel Russ Cut Rate Appetizers. And ever since then, he had it legally put, Russ and Daughter. So we really love that. And of course, big fans of neon, we love their neon sign. With the two fish flanking it, it's like the downward dog pose of the fish. And it's an amazing place. They're known for their smoked salmon, lox, and their bagels, and their dried fruit. We're going to go inside and check it out. Do it. Great. We're just going to get the, um, the ba everything bagel with uh, cream, with scallion cream cheese, and uh, is it just La Nova Scotia? Smoked salmon. Nova Scotia smoked salmon. That's right. what I love from this place. The, yeah, the Nova Scotia salmon. The other really cool thing about Russ and Daughter's appetizers is they're believed to be the originator of the name appetizers. Because what happened was when they first opened, they were selling their smoked salmon from a push cart in the Lower East Side because the Lower East Side was full of push carts. But eventually, Joel Ross saved enough money to open his store, but he needed a word to denote like the kind of stuff that they sold here, which was their smoked fish. So in the Jewish dietary laws, you're not allowed to mix like meat and fish and dairy. So there was the word deli for with the place where they sold cured meat, but they needed a word for the smoked fish joint, which became appetizer. So Russ and Daughters is believed to be the first one to use the word appetizers. And that's really cool. Well, I ordered the classic, so we got the everything bagel with scallion cream cheese and the Nova Scotia salmon. This is the traditional Jewish choice there. You cannot go wrong with this. You bet. That's amazing looking. Extra good. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm sure you've had this just as many times or not, if not more than I've had this. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because you don't grow tired of a Russ and Daughters smoked salmon, cream cheese, and everything bagel. I mean, who could ask for anything more? No. Okay, let's, let's go do it. for it. Let's do it. This is what mornings need to taste like. Even though it's the afternoon, this is what a morning in New York should start with. I agree, I have to have an extra bite. That's how good it is. Extra, extra good. They do their salmon better than anybody. Mm. Oh, wow. It's so it is, fresh. It is. And I wanna tell you another quick, funny story. Nikki Russ Veneman, the fourth generation co-owner, told us that her father was never so happy. She actually was a lawyer before she started working at the, uh, at the shop. And she said that her father was more happy when she learned how to smoke, how to um, slice properly their smoked salmon, like slice it so thin that you could read through it, than when she, you know, graduated from law school and got her bar degree. That he was <laughs> more proud of her for that smoked salmon cutting. So Priorities were in the right place. Exactly, exactly. Oh, and I want to point out on my Anthora cup, I'm having some tea that I got from another local place, Juicy Lucy, and this is the classic New York Anthora cup. It's our pleasure to serve you. I'll admit we were not planning on shooting at Russ and Daughters. A bunch of places were closed. This was a great accident. It was. I mean, like I said, how can you go wrong with this sandwich? This is breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Perfect. So good. I want to do a little critique of our little sandwich here. This is the everything bagel, and Russ and Daughters makes their own bagel, so it's extra good. And then the scallion cream cheese, and you can really taste like that scallion flavor coming through when you take a bite. And then, of course, their amazing smoked salmon. This is their Nova Scotia salmon. Extra, extra good. All around, best ever. Extra, extra good. Top notch. Oh, 
Oh my God, what a great day. So much fun with Here Be Bar. Please, uh, we'll put the link, subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. It's extra, extra good. Lots of New York fun and travel from all over the world. Thank you so much for taking me around. I had a great time. Yeah, and we had so much delicious Jewish food. And even Hudson, too. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you're welcome. You. Oh, he's giving the police point. No, 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 no. Don't eat his microphone. Don't eat my microphone. Bye, guys, and be safe.